Hello, in this presentation, we will record transactions related to the accounts receivable or sales cycle. We will be focusing in on the accounts receivable account, recording transactions for work done on account, meaning we do work and have not yet received the cash, and then we will then receive the cash. Therefore, we're working mainly with accounts receivable, revenue, and cash. It's helpful to work by cycle here rather than just by date because it will let us see what is happening in terms of a particular process, a particular process within the accounting department. So it's good to work a few problems by cycle and then a few problems uh, that's just going to be by date and not necessarily by cycle working on the entire accounting transaction, whatever happens to happen at any particular date, bouncing around from department to department. We're going to record these journal entries in the general journal on the left hand side. We will then post them not to the general ledger but to this worksheet. Later on we will post to the general ledger but for now we will be working with a worksheet because it will provide quick information for a relatively few amount of journal entries in order for us to see the impact on each account and on net income very quickly. We will then go to the uh, accounting equation and see the effect of each transaction on the accounting equation as well. Note that we do have the accounts in order of the accounting equation of assets, then liabilities, then equity, then revenue and expenses. We're going to start with zero balances at this point in time. We're then going to record our transactions here and result in an ending balance uh, after every transaction, that ending balance hopefully always remaining in balance. Let's take a look at the first transaction. We have perform work on account and invoice the client. So we're going to do work and invoice the client. Therefore, first question, is cash affected? We're going to say no, not in this case because we invoiced and we have not done work. Keyword for many book problems will be on account. In real life, of course, we would know that we basically invoiced the client and have not received cash at this time. And recording this transaction would be probably routine. We probably might not even know the journal entry or whoever is processing this may just send an invoice out, not really know the journal entry. But in a book problem and in real life, we want to know what's going on so that if there is an issue, we can go and kind of see what the system is doing. And a book problem is going to have to tell us in words that we didn't get money, we got something on account. Typically using the word on account, they may use the term on credit. The problem with the term on credit is that it mixes up what a debit and credit is and, and having uh, credit terms. So a lot of times books will avoid that by saying on account. So let's record this transit. We're first going to say cash is not affected. Then I would focus in on what we received. What did we get? And in this case, we got something intangible. We got an IOU. We've got a client owing us money. That's going to be accounts receivable. It's not as good as cash, but it is still an asset. It's our second favorite asset. We expect that to be converted into cash within 30 to 60 days. Therefore, it's still a pretty good thing. So we're going to say it's an asset and as an asset, assets have normal debit balances. We need to make it go up. People owing us more money. Therefore, we're going to do the same thing to it, which in this case is another debit. So I'm going to put my cursor here on E6. Going to copy this going to put that on transaction A. I'm going to put it right on top in B5. Right click and paste it. Not normal. I don't want to change the format of the text, but one, two, three, just the values only. So there's that half of the transaction and you could just type it in there, but I would recommend copying and pasting. That helps me from avoiding errors and spelling errors and whatnot, uh, at least reduces those uh, greatly. Then we're going to say that we have a 13,000 is the amount. So we're going to just type that in C5, 13,000. I'm not going to put any commas or any kind of other referencing. And when we select enter, then the Excel will put those commas and references in there in accordance with the format of the cell. Now we've worked last time with these transactions. I'm going to represent negative numbers with the credits. And I'm going to try to use a formula here. I could just type in negative 13,000. But I'm going to go ahead and use a formula and try to connect as much as possible. So I'm going to say if this is a debit, this needs to be a credit. And instead of saying equals negative, if I just start this, I'm going to delete that. If I just start with a negative, that's going to tell Excel if I point to anything else, it's like an equal sign. It's going to try to take that cell. So I'm going to point to this 13 
and it's going to say, okay, you want that C5, 13,000, and it's going to flip the sign, basically, in essence, multiplying it times negative 1. So that's one way that we can kind of have a formula. So I'm just including one more formula. You don't need to do that. You can type in a negative 13,000. But the more formulas we have, the better off we usually are, the less work we typically have in the long run, especially if we have to make adjustments for errors. Now we just need to know what the other side of the transaction is. And when people owe us 13,000, they owe us it because we did work. And when we do work, we earn revenue according to the revenue recognition, which is an accrual principle. We recognize re revenue when work is completed, when it is done. And that's typically the point in time close enough to when we send out the invoice. So we know that we're going to credit revenue. Now we already knew that, so I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put that in B5, B6, right click, paste one, two, three. There's our journal entry. If I want to indent this a little, I might double click on it and space bar three times and indent it like that. So there we have it. Now we might want to double check why we are crediting revenue. We know we credited it because we debited the accounts receivable. However, we might actually want to ask ourselves if I hadn't, you know, debited receivable, would I know that I could credit revenue? To answer that, we would say, well, revenue, if we look at our cheat sheet, would be a normal balance of a credit. Revenue never goes down, meaning the clients or customers never pay us. We pay the clients or customers. And therefore, we're going to increase revenue. How do we increase something? We do the same thing to it as its normal balance. So revenue has a credit normal balance. We will then increase it by doing the same thing to it by crediting revenue. So let's post this. This is the beginning balance. This is going to be the column we will post to. So I'm going to say revenue or accounts receivable is here. I'm going to go to cell G6 and say equals and then point to that 13,000. That's just going to pull that number over. It'll go from zero up by 13,000 to 13,000. Put us out of balance by 13,000. And there we have that. No, inf no effect on net income from that part of the transaction. Then we're going to post the revenue side. So here's revenue there. Here's revenue starts at zero we're going to be recording in cell g12 so in cell g12 i'm going to say equals and then point to that 13,000. we will then go from zero up in the credit direction by 13,000 to 13,000. put us back in balance here meaning that we'll go to zero and net income will go up in the credit direction there we have that now note that i'm recording debits and credits over here not with two columns just with one column but the debits equal the credits in that the debits are positive and the credits are negative. Therefore, the debits minus the credits are zero. Over here, I'm recording them in a kind of more traditional fashion in that debits are on the left, credits are on the right, and, and I'm recording the credit as a negative number or bracketed number. Therefore, if I highlight both of these, I can say, hmm, debits minus the credits equal zero. This function, this format of putting credits as negatives, is very useful in practice so that's why i'm going to introduce that i think a lot of textbooks don't give the benefit of of telling people that because uh they think it might uh confuse plus and minus and debit and credit but the the idea the reality of the world is that if you're learning debits and credits you're going to get mixed up and have to differentiate no matter what between what a plus and minus is because we're going to be adding and subtracting debits and credits so we're, we're just no matter what you do you're going to have to figure out what the difference is between those two things and it's very functional and reasonable and what worth doing to start using uh if you're using software which i highly recommend doing like excel to recognize that uh, a credit can be used in this format and you'll see it oftentimes so what that does for us here is it allows us to condense a worksheet like this from six columns that we would need if we had a separate debit and credit column for each to three columns and so hopefully you can see kind of the functionality it'll it'll also allow us to shorten up some of these formulas and to just do a quick calculation so that excel will do all the work for us although we can see all the work being done by excel uh, as, as it's being done because we can see what the formulas are doing so hopefully i convinced you on that but in any case net income that means net income is increasing because that's a credit. So the credit is increasing that income. That's not a loss. That means the credits of revenue are greater than the debits of expenses. 
What's going to happen to the accounting equation? Well, we know that the assets went up, the green accounts went up with receivables, so that's going to increase. Nothing happened to the liabilities here, so liabilities will then remain the same. And then we see that equity is increasing. That's not a decrease, that's a credit direction, and equity accounts have credits. Therefore, it is increasing. We also know that it must be increasing because assets went up, therefore the other side must as well go up. Next transaction, we're going to see what we have. B. Receive cash on account for work performed in the past. So first question I would ask is, is cash affected? And in this case, we're going to say, yes, it is affected because it says received cash. Now, this is one question that people often get mixed up because it also says on account. And people often think, well, if it says on account, that typically means that cash is not affected, that something happened on account, meaning accounts receivable. And when we purchase something or when we when we make a sale on account, then that is the case because we're not getting cash and we're recording receivable as we did in the first journal entry. But when we, uh, the second journal entry in the cycle of accounts receivable is affecting both cash and receivable because we got cash and we're paying off the receivable owed to us. So anytime you, you see the term received cash, however, we can really just start there without even knowing anything else that's going on. We're going, okay, we received cash. That's pretty clear language. Let's just record that first. There's 13,000 and we received cash for. Well, cash is, a, is an asset, has a debit balance. We need to make it go up. We therefore will do the same thing to it, which in this case will be another debit. So I'm gonna copy cash. I'm gonna right click on cash on E5, cell E5, copy. We're gonna put that in cell B8. So in cell B8, right click, paste, one, two, three. And yes, you can type in cash there. It's not a very long word, so I'm not too worried about misspelling that one. But uh, I'm just going to copy and paste as much as possible. So it's going to be 13,000 in cell C8. No formatting. We're just going to type that in. And then I'm going to have a negative or credit 13,000 over here in D9. Now, again, I could put a negative 13,000 or use a formula, which would be negative of this cell. So I'm going to take whatever's in that cell, I'm going to flip the sign on it, and that'll be it. So we got a debit and then our credit. Then we just need to know what the credit will be. If we got cash from a client or customer, you would think that we would then credit revenue. However, we have not yet received, the, I mean, we already recorded the revenue up here. So the credit's not going to go to revenue. Instead, it's going to go to accounts receivable. Because we have this money here, people owing us money that then needs to go down this is really just tracking you can think of this receivable later on we'll talk about a subsidiary ledger which will break this receivable down by customer so you can think about this as kind of like the lump sum total of the list of accounts reporting who owes us money and so people owe us thirteen thousand. if we think about that it's just one person then we're going to say now they paid us thirteen thousand. that then needs to go down it's an asset assets have normal debit balances we're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So I'm going to copy that, right click, copy, I'm going to paste that in cell B9, there's B9, right click, paste, one, two, three. I'm then going to double click before the A, I'm in the cell, space three times, and there we have it. Now we'll go ahead and post this out. So we got cash first. Here's the debit to cash. I'm going to post that in the cash account. I'm going to in cell uh, G5. So within cell G5 equals and then pointing to that 13,000. Then once I hit enter, that zero will go up by 13,000 to 13,000. Then we have the accounts receivable here. Here's the accounts receivable on the trial balance. We're going to post it to G8 or <laughs> G6. And I'm going to double click on it because there's something in it. So C5 in the formula bar is in it. So if I double click on it, I'll see that. There it is. And then I'm going to go to the end of it and say plus and then point to this 13,000 credit. This is a debit balance account. That is a credit. Those are opposites. And therefore, this balance will go down once we hit enter, put us back in balance. No effect on net income. So it's important to kind of see what's happening all across the board here. Assets went both up and down. So we think about our accounting equation. We could say, well, assets went up because cash went up. 
but assets also went down because receivables uh, went down. And there's actually no net increase there. No net increase on liabilities. No net increase or decrease on the capital. So this is one of those kind of funny accounts where two assets happened. From a debit and credit standpoint, it actually kind of makes more sense because we have a debit and a credit. From an accounting equation standpoint, the net of these is zero, meaning assets, liabilities, or equity are not affected at all. Although we got cash as well, we didn't get uh, any revenue in this second journal entry. We recorded revenue in the first journal entry because this is when we earned the revenue. This is when we received the cash. We didn't do any work on this date. We did the work on this date. So that's when we recorded it under the revenue recognition principle. C says, performed work on account and invoiced the client. So we're gonna say, is cash affected? We're gonna say, no, we did work on account. So we invoiced the client and typically that's gonna be the driving document later on when we start talking about uh, accounting software. It's an invoice that's gonna drive this transaction. And we're gonna say that cash isn't affected, therefore what did we receive? We got an IOU, we got an accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is an asset. Assets have debit balances. We need to make it go up. Therefore, we will do the same thing and debit accounts receivable. So I'm gonna copy accounts receivable. I'm gonna put that in cell B11, right click and paste one, two, three. Put the dollar amount in C11, that dollar amount being 650. We then know that we will credit something I could put in just a negative 650, but I'm gonna start using that formula. So I'm gonna say negative and then point to this 650 there and that will pull over the, the number and flip the sign. Now we just need to know what this account will be. Why are people gonna pay us $650? Because we did work, earned revenue and invoiced the client expecting to be paid in the future. Therefore, the credit is gonna to go to revenue. So here's the revenue account, we're gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste that in B12, right click, paste, one, two, three. Again, you could just type it in there, but I'm gonna copy and paste, it's a bit faster, bit easier, bit easier to learn Excel. Double click on that cell, I'm gonna indent three times on the space bar, and there we have that. Now if this, form, if this worksheet weren't locked, <laughs> you can go over here and you can indent using the home tab, alignment group, and increase indentation. Now we knew we were gonna credit revenue because we debited the uh, receivable and we had to credit something. But uh, if we think about it, once again, double check, revenue has a credit balance account. We need to make it go up because revenue always goes up and we got more revenue. And therefore we will do the same thing to it as its normal balance. Its normal balance being a credit, resulting in us crediting it in order to increase it. Now we'll post this. We're gonna say receivables here is an asset. Here's the receivables account on the trial balance. We are gonna record it in the blue section in column G. So we are on G5, double click on G5. We see the activity. I'm gonna to go to the end of this and say plus and then point to the 650. Now I know this formula is getting a bit complex so you could just type in the formula as long as you have these in the exact same cells on the worksheet we are working with. Uh, or you could, if something gets messed up and, you, and this gets deleted, I'm just gonna delete it, then you're really just gonna go back and point, say equals and point to everything with a receivable. So including this has a receivable plus, and then I'm gonna point to this has a receivable plus, and then this has a receivable and enter. That brings the receivable back up to this uh, 650 and it puts us out of balance by the 650 until we record the other side down here in the revenue or income. Again, something is in it, therefore we will double click on it. I'm gonna to go to the end of it and say plus, and then point to the 650 over here. That's gonna increase our revenue, put us back in balance, and increase the net income. Remember that net income is calculated as revenue minus expenses, Revenue is increasing here, nothing's happening to expenses. That is not a loss for us. It's representing the fact that revenue has a credit balance and went up in the credit direction, credits being represented with brackets. What happened to our accounting equation? 
We know that assets went up because the accounts receivable went up. So I'm going to say assets are increasing. We know that nothing happened to liabilities. Nothing's happened to liabilities in our entire uh, process so far. So none. And then we know that the equity too is increasing for a couple of reasons. One is that the revenue went up, increasing equity. Anytime revenue goes up or net income goes up, that will increase the total equity. We also know that if assets went up on the left-hand side of the equal sign, then the equity too must be going up on the right-hand side if equity is the account affected on that side. Going to transaction D. Perform work on account and invoiced the client. So same accounts. Again, we're working on the same account, this receivable account. So is cash affected? We're going to say no. We did work on account, key term, on account. Therefore, we're going to say what did we receive? And in this case, we received an IOU. That IOU being represented by the receivable account. It's going to go up. Receivable account is a debit balance, normal balance account. The way to make any account go up is to do the same thing as its normal balance, which in this case is another debit. So I'm going to copy the receivable. We're going to put that in B14, right click and paste 123. We'll then enter the dollar amount, that dollar amount of 780. So it's going to be 780. I'm going to credit 780 as well. So we have an equal number of debits and credits. I'm going to do that with a formula by saying negative and point to that 780 and enter. Now we just need to know what that account will be. And if we did work, then we earned revenue under the revenue recognition principle and accrual principle. Therefore, we will recognize revenue. Revenue is here. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste that in cell B15 by right clicking and pasting 123 values only. I'm then going to double click on the revenue and indent or space three times to have the indentation. Now we already know that we were going to credit revenue because we debited the receivable, but let's think through it. Revenue has a normal credit balance. Revenue only goes up. Net income goes up and down. However, revenue only goes up and therefore we will increase revenue by doing the same thing to it. That same thing is a credit. Okay, so now we're gonna post this. We got a debit to the receivable. So I'm gonna scroll up to the receivable. That's in cell G6 is where we need to post this. Something is in that cell. Therefore, we will double click on that cell, go to the end of it and say plus, and then point to that 780. So these are the accounts, of course, now that are included in the accounts receivable and enter. So now we are up to 1430, 1430, which includes this 650 and this 780. Then we'll record the second side, which is the revenue side. That is here. So it's in G12. So I'm going to double click on G12, go to the end of it, plus, and then point to that 780. That will increase revenue, put us back in balance, increase net income. So revenue goes up and net income goes up and we are back in balance here we will then uh, take a look at the accounting equation it's going to be the same transaction here where uh, accounts receivable went up accounts receivable is an asset therefore assets are increasing nothing happened to the liabilities so none and then we're going to say that equity is increasing so that's going to be an increase in equity and that's what we have so far Next, we have E says received cash on account for work performed in the past. So first question is cash affected and we're going to say yes. Key term is received cash. So cash is going to go up because we received it. Don't let this on account terminology throw you off. We know that cash went up because we received it. Cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to go ahead and copy cash. We're going to put that on top. It's on B17. Right click and paste 123. Within the debit side, we're going to put 650. And then we're going to credit something for 650. We could type in negative 650 or negative and then point to the 650. And that will bring the balance down. Now we just need to know what account will go with that. And if we uh, normally, if we get paid, we would say it should be possibly revenue. 
But of course, we had already recorded the revenue in the past up here in this account. We recorded the 650 revenue. And here we know that we are reducing the asset, reducing the receivable, reducing the amount that people owe us. That account reflecting what people owe us is accounts receivable. How do we know that with the term of the text? Because of that on account. So we know that received cash means cash is affected. We know on account means either accounts receivable or accounts payable is affected. In this case, receivable. Therefore, the receivable here needs to go down. So we're going to decrease the receivable. I'm going to copy the accounts receivable. I'm going to paste that here in B18. Right click, paste one, two, three. I'm going to double click before the A, space bar three times, and there we have that. Now we know we're going to credit the receivable because we debited cash. We also want to think about it and say, hmm, accounts receivable is a debit balance account. It needs to go down because it represents what money is owed to us by customers. And after payment from customers, then the amount owed to us will go down. Therefore, we need to decrease the receivable. Receivables are assets. Assets have debit balance, normal balances, and we need to decrease it. Therefore, we will do the opposite thing to it, which is a credit. So let's post this out now. We got the cash first. I'm going to go up to the cash account in cell G5. Something's in it. Going to double click on it. Then go to the end plus scroll back down. We're going to get to this at 650. I know it's kind of in two different cells here, but then enter. And there we have it. Now, if you want to just type it in there, you can just type in equals C8 plus C18. But I highly recommend using formulas uh, in this because it'll really help you go back and try to say hmm, what's in this cell and you can just see by by looking at the highlighted cells here right and see <laughs> what's in there that's really helpful we are now out of balance by 650 we're going to go to the accounts receivable so here's accounts receivable in cell g6 something's in it therefore we will double click on it go to the end of it plus scroll down just a tab going to point to that 650 once we hit enter it's going to go back down the receivable, put us back in balance, and there we have it. Now there's still 780 in the receivable because we haven't received this amount that was recorded in D yet. Note that there's no impact on our net income from this transaction because we had recorded the increase in revenue up here in transaction C, transaction C, the date of the time when the work was actually done. We'll then go over here and we will record the increase or decrease. Cash is going up, but accounts receivable is going down. Both assets, therefore, no effect on assets, no effect on the, um, the liabilities, and no effect on the equity. So that's going to be the, one of these weird transactions again where there's no effect on any of it. Is revenue recognized when re we receive cash? We're going to say, uh, no, not necessarily. It's recognized when we earn the revenue, when we do the work. Is, recogni is revenue recognized when we have earned it, whether cash is, and we're going to say yes. So that's the revenue recognition principle. That's one of the major points that we want to get from working an, an, an account with accounts receivable or the receivable cycle. Note that if you were working with a company that was on a cash basis, they wouldn't even have a receivable account. And uh, this receivable account, it depends on the industry as to how important it is. If you're in an industry that always gets cash at the same time work is done, it may not be as important, but many industries, such as the legal industry, or if you're a bookkeeper, or any industry that does work before they get paid, and then they bill the client to be paid at a later time, will need this accrual account of receivable, because this is the account that helps us track who owes us money. We're going to back this account up later with a subsidiary ledger, a list of clients who owe us money. <laughs> and so that's going to be very important depending on the type of industry that we are in.